so now, um, and it was quite interesting because Wilson and uh, Dustin, you guys were talking about metaverse. So I do want to talk about this because it's really hot right now. It's really popular. So I'm very curious in terms of opportunities. So what opportunities will the rise of metaverse offer to scientists and startups? And I think, Michael, you work in a venture capital, uh, which is based in Israel. And I'm sure, like, from the deal flow you're having, you're seeing, like, these days, there must be some sort of really interesting scene that you're having. So I appreciate if you can share with us, Michael. Okay, sure, sure. Um, I mean, like, a lot of people nowadays talk about Metaverse, but I think Metaverse itself is still uh, in its very early stage. Like if you are thinking about like uh, living inside a complete like kind of venture uh, vir virtual world like a uh, Matrix or Ready Player One, and we, we are nowhere close to that yet. But like uh, if if you think about like a um, a long term more approach, like uh, we tend to in, in human like society, we tend to overestimate the impact of technology in a short time, but we all underestimate the, the effect in the long run. So we have a very high expectation of metaverse happening maybe in the next uh, few months or one year, and I don't I don't think that will be the case. However, like um, even though like uh, we are not ready for like a truly kind of uh, uh, immersive experience at the moment. However, I think uh, the opportunity actually lies on building the infrastructure that towards that direction. So to enable the metaverse to, to kind of expand itself later. So in, uh, in venture capital world, uh, we see quite a lot of like a successful business that are generating like massive traction and like a, a good profit, like a, such as like building the digital payment system, building the like a digital identification, like the uh, 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 crypto KYC and, and like, a, Everyone have their own uh, identification in in like using the using a digital ID those kind of things, and like um, I think each of them like uh, the, the 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 element that we add together bit by bit will at the end bring us to us a complete kind of experience of, of the metaverse, and also like um, a lot of time I see concern in the investor and also entrepreneur like uh, saying that why are we investing or why are we working on something that we cannot touch like uh, i'm sure like everyone everyone heard about it like it's a scam like uh, 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 like you, you cannot touch it's not like a like a real estate it's generating like kind of rental and stuff like that i heard that all the time but i i, I do think those arguments is, is not like valid because think about it like uh, what what is capital like what, what is valuable for, for human is that like uh, when you put your time into something and that becomes valuable? Like think about like um, do you do you put your time more in talking to your friend like face to face or or, or do you do you put the time more into into your cell phone like WhatsApping other people like uh, using Instagram looking at looking at Facebook those kind of things those are all virtual if you think about it, it it's not like a, that you can touch Facebook and there's nothing you can touch you can touch your screen but you cannot touch Facebook so so those are all virtual it's the, the value derived from the time that you invest and that you put inside that things that software it can be it can be like a, a um, sandbox or whatever and those is, is derived from, from time. It's not like something super concrete that you can touch. So like, I, I think I think when people think about investing or kind of like uh, evolving to, to create something in the in kind of metaverse or, or virtual world, then, then you can think about how to engage people you, like to put their time onto using their software or, or hardware. So, so I think those is where the opportunity actually lies. So that's my view, yeah. That's great. Uh, thanks, uh, Michael. Um, but to be honest, I haven't said that. I'm not sure if I want to live in the world of like a ready player one. Because <laughs> 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 um, I do, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not welcoming Metaverse, but I'm saying like, but I'll, I wish I have a beautiful virtual world, but 
also a beautiful uh, reality as well because in Ready Player One was a little, um, it's, it's about pollution uh, in the real world. And um, so I, I think, uh, like you said then, exactly. So I think we should, uh, the, the opportunity is really looking at how the hardware and software and potentially um, at least I, I guess what, what you meant is like, uh, instead of having a virtual world replacing our real life, I think the virtual world is more about augmenting our human experience, our connections, our social interaction with our loved ones, if we have any uh, you know, special needs. Um, and I, I think that that's definitely a, a very interesting space. Um, to, be, to be more precise, um, basically, what I mean is, uh, if, if we think about like a Ready Player One, those kind of things, like we, we're not yet there. First, the technology is not yet there. Second, like the, the, the psychology, what you have said, you don't want that yet, exactly. at least. So like, uh, we, we don't know what human actually wants at this point of time. So like, uh, in order to find the opportunity to, to in, involve more into Metaverse, it's, it's an evolving progress. So we build bit by bit by like enhancing different infrastructure. And, and once you're trying to build those, it's much easier for you to, to like build traction over there than selling a, like a pure dream. Like uh, you think that will be the perfect kind of metaverse. It, you don't know, it might be there, it might not be there. So like if you're building the infrastructure itself, it, it's much easier like uh, uh, for, to get people start, to get people use it. So like, uh, um, I think people should like uh, go to that direction. We, we, no one know like where, where the metaverse will end up at the end. But like uh, if you're building the, the tools itself and then you, you can be successful in an earlier time than like just raising funds. <laughs> Agree. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. And I, I guess to be honest, like that kind of come back to uh, Dr. Lam's um, point on investing in university because I feel in order to take this matter first forward, I totally agree with you, Michael. We need to understand how this is going to affect like human beings from a physiological perspective. Mm -hmm. What is going to be uh, what was going to be done on our bodies if we we have this headset on and we live in this virtual world. Uh, physiologically, uh, even psychologically, or even from a philosophical perspective, uh, what does that mean to humanity? And and I think there's a lot can be uh, researched and look into, and and uh, and take this forward. Um, so I see I see Dr. Lam is very also passionate about metaverse. I would love to hear um, your your view on that as well. So please. Well, thanks, Yang. I I think you you. Uh, your points I fully share, I, I would echo. And uh, uh, Michael, excellent sum, sum up of uh, the recent developments and the key questions. Uh, I think that uh, I also uh, watch uh, uh, Ready Player 2, uh, you know, among the first viewers. And uh, immediately, like Yang, I thought about how to improve, you know, that ghetto you know, that <laughs> living environment and the relationships, the uh, the family, uh, mm -hmm. because all social problems, you know, uh, come from a broken family. Mm -hmm. and, and and so I, I, after Ready Player One, I, I became uh, not so interested in uh, the metaverse. <laughs> but but uh, these days, uh, I think we do have, uh, as Michael said, we are in the, starting point as both of you yang and michael you know, we are still you know learning and in a state of flux the fact of the matter is using your time metaphor time is money talent is money um, ideas are money so uh and i found that uh, i recently uh, i have done a quick survey among young people in, in preparation of this uh, uh chat today uh, and uh, uh, I noticed that uh, they spend a lot of time on their smartphone. You know, well, like, you know, the only time, the only downtime is really uh, not even during meals because they eat with their smartphone as well. Uh, and they sleep before they sleep, the smartphone was on. Uh, so it was just tremendous. Like the moment they wake up, you know, they are, one with the smartphone so it, it, it's really a tremendous challenge this is another 
issue, right? But uh, we do see a lot of opportunities. We see, for example, this need for O2O, seamless, and how to, as Yang said, augment and enhance our real life scenario. And uh, we also now think about, we need to think about and solve problems, uh, what I loosely call, call uh, metaverse governance. Uh, so when we start to buy a piece of virtual land, uh, or, you know, we start to IPO, you know, 25% of our sale on the metaverse <laughs> and things like that. And we start to trade weapons, you know, seize during games uh, and so on and so forth. We, we need some regulation and governance, you know, there or, or you know, institutional uh, governance arrangements, at least uh, if not legally. So many issues are there. So a lot of opportunities for law tech and reg tech. And I also see a lot of opportunities in digital assets. In the old days, a, a company was very proud of, very proud of their buildings and their fleet of cars and so on, trucks. Nowadays, the most valuable companies on earth, they have nothing physical, they have data, data which is virtual. So virtual asset, digital asset, the name of the game. And, and then how do we uh, enhance that? I mentioned earlier about the RCEP, the Regional uh, Comprehensive Economic uh, Cooperation Partnership uh, Framework. If you look into that uh, free trade agreement, the entire document, uh, you know, it has maybe 20 chapters or so, but chapter 12, the whole chapter is talking about e-commerce or if you if you expand a little bit, it's the metaverse, right, or related. So you can see the importance that we as society, economy, attach to this. So I, I like to change my view from my slightly uh, reserved and questioning view about uh, uh, the metaverse after seeing uh, Ready Player One uh, to one that that is uh, let's let's try it, let's embrace it, let's fix it, and let's do it and learn and change and enhance. Quoting uh, 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 the legendary Deng Xiaoping, you know we have to. Uh, cross the river, you know, uh, by uh, step by step on this uh, uh, so, so I, I think we, but we need to, it's not baby steps. We need, you know, like uh, a, not fast run, you know, it's not 200 meter sprint. It, it's, a, it's a fast walk and they're careful and, you know, walking together. Uh, I really think uh, I see a bit of momentum there. At Cyberport, we have seen five unicorns coming out. And the fifth one is Animoca Brands. They are leading the whole world, not just in Asia, about NFT and similar things. So Hong Kong, in a way, has become or is becoming the NFT center for Asia. Uh, and so I have a lot of questions and opportunities in mind. Why don't we have an NFT exchange? Uh, and if the country is pursuing uh, net zero uh, carbon policy, you know, kind of direction towards 2060, and Hong Kong has set 2050 as the target date for carbon neutrality, then should we try carbon trading as well? And these are all digital assets. So uh, I have changed. I have reformed. I now uh, embrace the metaverse, but I do it, you know, hopefully together with all of you with common sense. And with, like Yang said, the whole idea is to make our real life, our families, our society, and our economies, economies better. So, and not to forget about where we come from and where we are and try to 
immerse into something, uh, you know, per se, yeah, one, you know, one way uh, ticket into the metaverse is not recommended. Mm -hmm. So I'm very hopeful. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Lam. Uh, I think these these are very interesting thoughts. Um, I think especially, um, you know, I was looking at NFT these days as well, because I mean, to be very honest, as a charity, we're, we're also like exploring different uh, fronts and see how we can potentially uh, you know, take on the new tag and explore different things, not just introduce to the public, but also like how, what, what does that mean to our, to, our, to our activities as a charity promoting science and technology as well. So this is also like something personally, I found it pretty interesting. Um, like it's really interesting to see how the public, how the population, a lot of people see digital assets these days, especially through NFC, you know, such a hip, um, and and but, but you know there are people that just like they can just uh, you, you know really say oh you know NFT the, these are just like JPEG and GIF and and, and why why are people paying like so much about it but it's also interesting to see um, with these questions and challenges on hand but it's also interesting to see actually people's perception are changing. And I think for, for entrepreneurs, for the ecosystem, the stakeholders, for us, for everyone, it's just good to be open-minded, like uh, just embrace it, like like you said, and, and see how it goes. And also along the way, just be more, um, also like do a lot of thinking along the way as well. Think about the implications and uh, how that can do good to our environment um, and to our human life as well. And, and thank you so much all for uh, today's really, really generous sharings. Um, it's so wonderful to, see, to hear so much initiatives, policies and thinking are actually happening in Hong Kong. And everyone is so passionate, is putting, pushing this forward. Uh, I mean, I have to say, I would, I would love to, you know, slot a time uh, with some of you guys, like basically all of you, like after this call, uh, I think we, we should like have a bit, a bit more maybe uh, detailed discussion in terms of strategy and how Wilot could potentially work closer with you and how we can potentially better collaborate because we do have uh, new initiatives coming up uh, supporting science research um, and also many other fronts as well, especially in this uh, technology transfer areas and because we do see there are quite a lot of room that something can be done uh, from our side. And uh, we're very interested in uh, getting involved. We got, and I personally got very inspired by this panel discussion today. And it definitely informed uh, why our future work better. And we hope that we're going to help connecting dots and weave a much better uh, ecosystem and resources for our scientists and innovators from Hong Kong and also across the world. So echoing what Dr. Lam has said, uh, what matters is actions. So um, let's make it happen. And thank you so much all for uh, participating in today's panel discussion again. And I wish you all very well. And please do uh, take care for now. And I will definitely talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.